So good evening and welcome to tonight's event. Can everybody hear me? Yes? yes. Okay, fine. My name's Andrew Hammerschmidt and I live down by the Eton College. In a way, it is my fault that we're all here tonight. For the last few years, I've stood as a Conservative Council candidate in, in Nuneaton, Warwickshire, Wembrook, Wembrook at Attleborough, Barpool, and this year I stood again in the Barpool by-election, but this time for UKIP. Frankly, I've, I've lost all faith in the local Tories and jumped ship earlier this year, and I'm glad I did. I found a functioning, welcoming party structure in place. I suggested to stage some events to raise our profile. When it was suggested that our MEP might be available to speak here, after meeting everybody around the table, agreed that it would be fantastic idea to invite him and a few months on here we are our speaker tonight is, is your member of the eu parliament so let me say a few words about that august organizations organization the european union okay joe i've watched many many uh, hours of Westminster Parliament debates and analysed the modern state of affairs. There are three types of debates our MPs spend their time on. First, there are serious discussions about national issues and national organisation or le legislation as well. Taxation, for example, and the Bournemouth Borough Council Bill, stuff like that. Second, there are silly hobby horse and pet project debates. They usually take place Fridays when everybody's gone home to look after their constituents or for a four-day weekend, who knows. Generally, those motions never get anywhere and, and are instantly forgotten. In short, the total waste of time, effort and money. I've noted down a couple of recent debates of that type in the House of Commons to give you a flavour. Food security in Africa, female and Catholic su succession to the throne. We're all eg egalitarians now, are we not? So you get the picture. But the third area, which takes up by far the most of our MPs' time, is rubber stamping and gold plating directives agreed by the European Commission. An unelected quango operating behind closed doors responsible for all EU legislation. All EU legislation. How very Soviet Union. So there's no real choice for Commons MPs because the decisions have been made in Brussels by the time they are debated in London which obviously emasculates national par parliaments. It is the law for such agreements to become law in each member state. The other institution is, of course, the European Council, the meetings where prime minister presidents et al. get together and basically have dinner while their entourages haggle over each word of the final communique. But our speaker tonight is not a commissioner or not a president yet, but a member of the European Parliament. So a brief word about this, the third institution before I hand over. And I can see he's making notes, he's waiting for me to finish. Remember the end of, of The Wizard of Oz? Sorry to spoil it if anyone hasn't seen it yet. A small man operates a big machine to make some some to make him seem awesome and credible. I understand Dorothy when she says, Toto, I have a feeling when we're not in Kansas anymore, meaning her situation has become unreal. I get a similar feeling regarding the European Parliament. It was clearly devised to give the impression that there is a forum in which your views are represented by MEPs fighting your corner. Nothing could be further from the truth. It is a powerless talking shop 
and the real decisions are made by the Commission. We in the West Midlands region, West Midlands region, have elected six MPs to sit in Brussels or Strasbourg whenever the travelling circus hap happens to pitch its tent there. Uh, the last uh, European elections in 2009 had an interesting outcome in the Nuneaton and Bedworth constituency, by the way. There were three big parties here, and UKIP came third overall. The fact that hardly anybody knows anything about their representatives in Europe when the EU makes three quarters of our legislation speaks volumes. And I'd like to introduce tonight's speaker, Mike Natras, MEP. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Are you going to sit down there and heckle now? Because yes. that, that's always a good plan. Because all of the politicians should be cross-examined. All of them you should ask difficult questions to. And basically, if you never see them, you'll never know what they're like. And yet you vote for them.